Hi everyone, and uh, thanks to the Educating Beyond Borders team for having me back um, at this year's summit after I also spoke last year. Um, it's a real privilege and I really appreciate it. Um, my name's Chris. Um, I'm just about to start as an F1 doctor in Edinburgh after finishing medical school at Southampton. Um, I also did an undergraduate degree in biomedical science at the University of Surrey and I've spent a bit of time in some research labs um, in Italy and the United States as well as here in the UK. Um, but enough about me. Uh, one of the things that they've asked me to talk about today is how we manage students getting back to campus. Um, it's something that's been on all of our minds as we've been kept away, as we've been, some of us struggling, some of us getting by um, with this completely different university environment that's been forced upon us by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, my experience um, at the moment has been of medical school, um, but hopefully the insights that I had from my undergraduate degree um, will be a bit useful, even though I was lucky enough not to do mine during a pandemic. Uh, which is definitely preferable. <laughs> um, so one of the things that's going to be really, really problematic and difficult for medical students especially is moving back to lecture theatres after we've had big expansions in our numbers recently. Um, so they've been adding 1,500 new medical school placements or more um, in the last few years. And what's happened is the infrastructure hasn't always kept up and been on time with that. So you'll have the same classrooms, the same lecture theatres but before the pandemic you were cramming more and more people into that and now in a post-pandemic world when students go back that is just not acceptable and it's not going to work um, we'll need proper rooms we need proper ventilation and in some cases we'll need smaller groups and if we need smaller groups sometimes that will mean that some teaching sessions will need more groups and that means they will run longer but that also poses its own problems Instead of running, say, 9 to 12, it might run 8 to 2, or it might run from 2 to 6. And that obviously encroaches outside normal working hours. Um, and in terms of widening participation, that could be a real issue for people that need to work to support themselves through university, um, people that have childcare responsibilities or other caring responsibilities, or also just people that need that time at the end of the day or the time beginning of the day. Um, for a bit of self-care, for a bit of looking after themselves, um, be that just relaxing at the end of the day, be that doing the extra bit of work that they feel they need to do to feel on top of their studies so that they're thriving on their course. Um, or in sports societies at university. And that's something that's been really difficult for us as students. Um, when universities closed during the first lockdown, societies closed. And that was really difficult for a lot of people's um, social life and their circle of friends and how they relaxed and looked after their mental health but we can't just bring it back as normal of course um, you know we need to, to, to steal a phrase we need to build back better um, and as people as things come back people still might feel nervous about getting in um, big groups or for some people that might not have been on campus at all yet during their university degree they might just be nervous about meeting new people it's completely understandable and happens to all of us um, so universities and unions need to make sure that every single person, the extrovert, the introvert, the international student, the person that lives just down the road, are looked after with their social events and no one is left to languish or be lonely. And one way to do this, for example, um, is to have fewer events that are centred around alcohol. That, that really excludes a lot of people um, that don't drink for, uh, for a number of personal reasons. Um, but, but they also need to make sure that events are run that are inclusive and, again, don't go into those outside working hours, the normal hours, um, when when people need that time um, to do other things, such as look after their children, their loved ones, or go to work. But a lot of these events are also expensive, and COVID-19 has decimated students' potential for part-time earning. A lot of the jobs that we had um, in the service industry, for example, or in hospitality, um, you know, even at pubs and cafes, they were, they were just closed down for a long time. So a lot of people haven't got as much money. So a lot when we go back to campus, um, that needs to be uh, borne in mind um, so that people aren't being expected to fork out extra money that might be making up for the union's lack of finances or the bar's lack of finances. Um, you know, students have been struggling as well as organisations, so that needs to be at the forefront of everyone's mind. Um, another big important part of the student experience for many is 
the student halls on campus um, and they need to be safe they need to be clean but one thing I think is really important is that renting needs to be more flexible in the last wave of the pandemic people felt in traps they felt that they were encouraged to come back to university as they will be at the beginning of next year um, but then they were felt that they were kept into that university accommodation they weren't allowed out a lot of the time they were quarantined and confined and they felt that they would they were brought back for the benefit of the university so they could get that cash flow coming back in and that they weren't really being looked after they weren't being uh, supported in the best way that they should so renting needs to be more flexible with the option that if people need to leave or if the university isn't functioning and delivering what it needs to for us as a student that we shouldn't just keep paying for the privilege of halls we can't live in or cannot leave um, and when people are trapped in those kind of environments, when people are away from loved ones, it can be devastating. It can be so hard for people. Um, and not everybody has access to the best phone, the best computer, you know, a Zoom premium or um, the, the technology you need to connect with people that are far away. And that's even harder, especially if people um, are international students and their, and their parents and their loved ones, their families might be a long way away in different time zones. So I think that when we come back to campuses, I think it's really on the universities to make sure that their IT is up to scratch. No more of this Windows 98 or this slow internet that doesn't support video calling um, or these loud, crowded spaces where you can't have a private conversation with the people that you love. You need to have good technology in private spaces that are available at any time for people to use so that they can get in contact um, with their support networks as they need them. Um, and obviously I've said a lot of things that seem quite negative so far, it all seems like quite a bit of a problem, um, but it's not been all bad. We do need to keep some of the innovations that we've had during COVID when we head back to campus. Um, for a lot of people, remote learning, boosted accessibility, people found it quite useful to have those things recorded, to have things sent to them in advance. Um, and that should really be retained. But just because something is more accessible for one person or one group of people doesn't just make it a silver bullet for accessibility. So a lot of people equally struggle with remote learning, um, whether that be with technology issues, whether that being focusing on the screen for a long time, um, whether that being uh, the tech interface is not a great environment to ask questions um, and it can be really intimidating to speak when you've not got a people in front of you not got a room in front of you i mean I, I can feel that right now just speaking to the video for you guys um so it, it, those things need to be considered and those things need to be retained um so in short i think to sum everything up it is really important that we're kept safe and I know I said to sum up and you should never give new points but to be kept could <laughs> be to be kept safe I think you know we should have PPE available um, we should have masks and sanitizer around because that is expensive um, and you know if we if we can't be uh, affording that on our on our tight student loans um, you know the virus could spread like rapid fire so the university should be providing that for free um, and equally if people do get it and have to quarantine you know some of these hotels are really expensive and it shouldn't be burdening any student financially if they catch covid um, so they should make spaces free um, and available and support students to quarantine um, in the university if, if at all possible um, in maybe spare halls if there are any around um, but yeah, to go back to the uh, the back back to the summing up, um, you know, you need to make sure that yes, the good things are retained, like the accessibility and the remote learning, the recordings, um, but students need to be adequately socially distanced in properly equipped and ventilated rooms given the proper IT support they need, both to complete their work and to talk to their support networks if they need it. Um, they need to be um, regularly tested, if possible, to make sure that the virus doesn't get out of control. Um, and universities really need to put an effort into bringing everybody together after the year that we've had. Um, you know, if people are feeling lonely, if people are feeling anxious, those social events, when we get back to campus, are gonna be so important. Um, 
but also for a lot of people so difficult. So there needs to be real thought put into that. Um, I hope my insights have been useful. Um, I've looked at the people on this bill and I cannot believe some of the people that I'm sharing this platform with. Um, you know, I'd say to anybody watching, um, reach out, uh, you know, send people messages, send me some messages and I'll do what I, do what I can to give you some tips. But um, this, this, these sort of things are great opportunities. Um, I, you know, I was just a normal medical student, um, did a bit of work with BMA, but other than that, just a normal medical student. Um, so anybody can go out there and, and meet these incredible people and network with these incredible people um, and learn from them. Um, you know, the insights I've had are by no means profound, but some of the speakers here are fantastic. So um, I hope you have a great rest of the day. And again, thanks to the team enormously for having me back. Um, stay safe, stay well, and uh, enjoy getting back to university. Bye.